Okay, let's get started with Minecraft Forge in NetBeans. On the DevX for Kids GitHub site, you'll find a link to a zip file that you can download, which provides everything that we need to get started. You have a zip file of Minecraft Forge. Unzip it into a folder of your choice. And here we remove the zip file first to avoid confusion. So we just have the content of the zip file. On the page you'll find a Gradle command that you can run on the command line. So go to the command line, go to the location where you unzipped Minecraft Forge, and then run that command. Once you've run the command, the process will begin. Minecraft Forge will set up all the kinds of files that you need for working with Minecraft Forge using Gradle to do so. And it'll take quite a while, so we're going to skip ahead until the end of this process. Now we're at the end of the process and it's completed. We have all the files and we're going to take a quick look at them. So here is the same folder as before with a bit more content. All the processing has been done for us by the Gradle command on the command line. And what we essentially have right now is a Gradle project. That Gradle project we need to open in NetBeans. And within the project is the basic infrastructure of a Minecraft mod and including a Java class as an example starting point. So with our NetBeans, NetBeans in this case IDE 802, we need to first install Gradle. So we've installed the Gradle support into NetBeans, which will enable NetBeans to recognize that folder as a Gradle project. This plugin is created by Attila Kellerman in Hungary. It's a really wonderful plugin for NetBeans, providing brilliant support, clean and simple, for doing Gradle development within NetBeans. And that means it needs to restart after the plugin has been installed. And here is NetBeans restarted. We now browse to that folder where we unzipped Minecraft Forge. And we open it. That's it. Now you can see in the bottom right that NetBeans does all kinds of processing to understand what's going on. We open the output window to see any output that might come there. But if you click on the progress bar in the bottom right, you can see what's going on currently. You can see that the message keeps on changing as different processes take place. And as NetBeans, in this case, the Gradle plugin of NetBeans, tries to figure out what's going on in that structure and creates a nice logical view for you to work with your project. This also takes a bit of time. So we're going to skip ahead to the end of this process and then continue. There we are. We can see the project structure and a bit of more processing is going on now. The class path is being scanned and the project structure is being set up. It's not taking very much time at all, actually. And here we go. Let's take a look at the Java class. The class path has been read. We can see that code completion works. There are no red error marks. This project is good to go. You can see all the dependencies of various kinds, Gradle dependencies that are reflected in this logical view, so you can see what's going on there. There's also the Gradle build file that um, we don't need to change anything there at all. It works out of the box. Right click, go to tasks, go to run, run client, and the Minecraft application starts up. We didn't need to do any manual configuration, any tweaking. We didn't need to do anything. 
it is all automated for us by this wonderful Gradle plugin for NetBeans. Now this is the output from Minecraft that you see and in the end here's Minecraft. Okay, now you can play Minecraft. The first thing we're going to do is make sure that we can press F6 or click that red, uh, the green uh, run button to start up the to start up Minecraft. So we're going to map the run command to run client, which is the target within the Gradle build. So now when we click on that green button at the top there, green run button, or press F6, now automatically the run client target will be run for us. Well, that simplifies the startup process considerably. Now here's Minecraft started up again. Let's take a look at the mods. So there's one example mod that the Minecraft Forge project has provided. You can see that there, that what you, what we're looking at inside Minecraft right now is what is defined within the example mod that the project provides. What we're going to do now is we're going to take one of the examples from the DevOps for Kids site, from the GitHub um, site with all these examples, and we're going to use that to create a second mod within the same project. So that project that we have right now we can use as the place where we create all of our mods. We create another class main mod which happens to be the name of the um, example that's on that page so we just copy and paste it in and next you can see there's a lot of examples that we can uh, make use of you can see here chat items is one example and you can look at many other examples here but the one that we're going to look at is one of the first ones and it will enable us to um, add potatoes to our collection of potatoes in the game. So we first um, register the class that we're going to do our application logic in. You can see that there's a chat items class uh, reference there, which doesn't exist yet, so we let it be created for us by clicking on the on the reference. And Next, we're going to populate that class with that starting method that is in the example. Let's copy it from there and paste it. And finally, we need to register our mod in the mod info file. You can see that there is a closing curly brace, and we're just going to copy the whole lot there and separate with a comma. So there's a comma, and then an open curly brace, and then the next mod is registered. We need to specify an ID. This is what we're doing right now. I'll call it chat items, for example, whatever you like. Make sure that in the class you reference that same name. So this is the link between the Java class and the registration of the mod. And then you can change anything you like to whatever you want it to be. So if you go down a bit, we'll see how this mod works. T will be pressed, so we'll have the chat window and then more potatoes will be added to our inventory. So we can copy some information from that into the description and tweak anything any way we like. Call it, you know, give it a description, 64 potatoes mod. I believe this is by Arun Gupta. Could be wrong. We specify that and then we click the green run button again and Minecraft starts up again and then we can uh, try out that mod click on the mods button and now we can see that the second mod at the or right at the end has our information so you can see our 60 mud, uh, 60 potato story is in there. Let's try it out. We'll play the game. OK, 
Game is loaded. We press T. We're in the chat window. We type potato and enter. You can see there, 64 potatoes have been added. So you can change the game using uh, Minecraft Forge very easily from within NetBeans. Have fun with Minecraft and use NetBeans.